Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from howtodrawcomics.net. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you my approach to drawing comic book styled beards. So let's get started. Okay, so first up, what I'd like to show you is a really neat little chart of various kinds of beards that actually relate to how much we trust a person with a particular type of beard. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to show you this is because it's a great example as to how beards or the style of beard that your character may have contributes in a large part to the way that people relate with them and how they feel about them. Beards also say a lot about a person's personality. Um, now, of course, you can't always judge a book by its cover, but more often than not, the way in which we dress, the style in which we cut our hair, the style of our clothes, of our makeup, and of our beards, all are forms of our own expression that help to describe and to show others who we are as a person. And really, when you think about it, at the end of the day, before you ever get the chance to talk to anybody, all we've got to go on is visuals. So if you've only got visuals to go on, really the first impression that we get of a person is indeed how they look and merely from what we're able to see alone. So here you can see the chart, and I really, really love this chart because it's very basic uh, examples of different styled beards, but you can tell just by looking at these black circles with the, with the beard shapes placed onto them, how it can feel in terms of how much you trust somebody or how, how you feel toward them in, in terms of uh, safety and, and, you know, that kind of thing when it comes to designing the beards for your characters. Now, as you can see, starting off with the very trustworthy beard, we've, we've got a whole bunch of these here. You've got the typical wizard-type beard, the, uh, the Gandalf of the pack, and so on and so forth. You've got the mustache which, you know, often if you read comics or you watch movies, you'll often see that, you know, many uh, law enforcers or police officers or detectives usually have a, a nice thick mustache uh, above their top lip. And then, of course, as we move down the line, we've got a whole bunch of other beard styles that slowly go from trustworthy all the way through mildly trustworthy, neutral, questionable, and uh, unsavory, and if we reach right to the end here, you've got the uh, the threatening, the dangerous, and the uh, the disastrous. And again, I, I just think that these are really great examples, and and show in vivid detail and dimension exactly how much of an impact the hairstyles, and specifically in this tutorial, the beard styles of your characters can have on your character designs. So I wanted to go through this with you today because ultimately I, I don't think that there's a lot of tutorials out there that go through drawing comic book styled beards specifically. And I'm still not perfect at it, but I have kind of over the years uh, through studying my influences and practicing putting pen to paper had developed somewhat of an approach to it that just makes the whole situation a whole lot easier really to to navigate around so what i'd like you to do now is open up your favorite graphics drawing application or grab a pencil and paper and uh, we'll get started on some beardy examples so here on the screen in front of us, I've basically got three head clones, and they're going to be the templates that we're going to use in order to actually sketch up three differently styled beards. Now, each one of those beards are not only going to be a different style, but I'd also like to show you how I tend to shade my beards in different tones. So, for example, if you've got a white beard, it's going to be shaded and rendered a lot differently to, say, a black beard, which is going to be uh, a lot more thicker looking and have a lot more shadow uh, and depth within it. So... What I'll do is I'll take you through each one of these and, and how I basically tackle it from start to finish, showing you the basic initial step of uh, getting the overall shape down and then walking you through the process of detailing and breaking that down into even more detail and essentially subdividing the basic shapes that we've drawn in and then, of course, detailing it out, rendering it out so that it actually looks furry. 
the sort of that actually looks like hair. So let's go ahead and do that now. I am working in Manga Studio for those of you who are wondering about the graphics application that I'm using here. And for the most part, in the beginning, as I'm drafting up the initial design of the beards or anything for that matter when it comes to comic book art, I do like to use just the default pencil that comes with Manga Studio. Um, there's no special brushes that I really use. Um, of course, there are brushes out there that, that make this, the situation easier to navigate around, but most of the time, I find that the default pencil brush within Manga Studio works perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the right-hand side of my screen, and I'm going to create a new folder, and this folder I'm going to call Beards. And this folder will be the group of layers that I construct my beard within. So I'm going to have a draft layer, like so. So we'll call this draft. And then I'm going to have a linear layer. And this linear layer, by the way, is essentially just going to be the outline of the basic details that my beards will consist of. And then of course, we're going to create another layer above that. And this is going to be the uh, the shadow layer. So we want a, a core shadow layer, which is going to be the, the base layer that we lay all our shadows in on. And then finally, let's just move that over here. And then finally, we're going to have a rendering layer. And this rendering layer will hold most of the details that will be within the beard and that we're going to use to articulate all the different hair clumps and, and kind of d distinct uh, forms of, of beard that we're going to create. All those, all those more intricate kind of details that are used to decorate and polish up the final image. So now that I've got the beards folder sorted and I've created all my layers, you may want to do the same as well, especially if you're working digitally. The primary reason for that is that because Otherwise, these things can tend to get a little bit disorganized, and if you don't name them properly, you'll get lost. And at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you got to kind of click around a little bit before the layer you find the layer that you want to be working on. But for me, it saves time, and I think that it's is just that alone is worth kind of making sure that you name your layers and and making sure that everything's organized. Also, you want to make it so that. When you are drawing and you're building up the image, you're building it up in such a way that you're not destroying or getting rid of any of the previous content that you may be building upon, such as the foundations of the artwork. Because if you begin to edit that and you want it back later, uh, and it's it's not quite in the state that you needed it to be in because you've adjusted it and you've changed it, well, that's going to be a problem for you because it'll be hard to get back. So just to keep things, you know, manageable, again, that's, that's where layers really come in handy. Rather than working on one layer, you can kind of build it up in passes. And that allows you to just, it allows you to go back through the different processes and steps that you've taken to achieve the image if you need to. And it also helps to keep it non-destructible. You know, you're not really destroying any part of the process along the way. So now that we've got the layers sorted, let's go ahead and begin blocking out the overall shape for our first beard. Okay, so I thought it would be really cool to kind of get the uh, trustworthiness of beards chart up over here so that we could do a trustworthy beard, a kind of mildly trustworthy beard, and then a absolutely not trustworthy, dangerous looking beard at the end. So I've got these up as references and you can see they're just very, very general references and you'll be able to find this chart if you just Google the trustworthiness of beards, it'll pop right up there for you. It's a great starting point even for just, you know, generating ideas and and trying to come up with things to begin with. You know, it it always helps to have something there to, to kind of feed your brain and to begin playing with the ideas with when you go into designing something like this, whether it be a hairstyle, whether it be a beard, or an entire character design, you do want to feed your head with a little bit of inspiration just to get the creative cogs warmed up and ready to churn. So here you can see I've got the uh, I've got them up as a reference. So I'm going to occasionally look back and and just see uh, you know what what kind of beard I may want to do. Um, now back to uh, Manga Studio here, where I've got my three heads. 
Uh, just to to make a bit of a distinction as to the beard that I'm sketching up and the heads themselves, I'm going to change the the head layer or the heads layer here to a blue. And the way that I'm going to do that is by simply hitting this button up here, the layer color over here to the right hand side of the screen. You can see the blue square there. And once I hit that, it's going to turn everything on that layer to a light blue. So you may have seen this actually in terms of uh, traditional uh, comic book artwork. A lot of the time what pencilers will often do is, is they'll kind of get it all nicely sketched out um, and, and drawn up in a blue kind of pencil. And then once it's inked in the sketch, the inks are scanned for that artwork, none of that blue will show up. Um, I'm not sure if there's a correlation here in Manga Studio to that at all, but I have found that this is a very fantastic uh, way of, again, just making it so that you're not getting confused by the layer you're working on and the layer you're working over when it comes to designing new assets or, or indeed inking the illustration. So let's begin on our Beards draft layer. And uh, let's begin just sketching out a very rough beard shape for our character. And I think that I'm going to begin with maybe a, uh, just to keep things interesting, let's start out with a very standard beard. So for example, this, uh, this is kind of the Chuck Norris beard that, um, you know, a, a typical superhero or trustworthy person may, may be styled with in, in terms of their facial hair. So. Um, it's the, going to be the first beard, the full beard, and um, I'm just going to sketch it out really lightly uh, at first. Again, just really attempting to capture the shape of the, the beard, the general shape of the beard, as much as possible. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, now this beard, it, it starts from just below the nose and kind of comes down this is where the moustache is going to be. It's going to essentially cover the entire upper lip or the upper uh, portion of the, the mouth muzzle, I like to call it, on the face. And it's going to come down over the upper lip to an extent, most likely covering the upper lip, in all honesty. Oftentimes you won't really see the, the top lip there. And, you know, it, it, of course, there's going to be variations in terms of where, whether or not you do include those types of things, whether you do reveal certain parts of the mouth. It really comes down to the style of beard, but the most important thing is that it doesn't look weird. You know, I mean, I would reveal the, the top lip of this beard if it didn't look strange, but, you know, most of the time, this, this top mustached area is going to be covered, depending on the length of beard, of course, but... In this particular example, I'm going to cover it up, but of course, you know, you'll have the you'll have the bottom lip showing a little bit more as as the beard kind of grows up the chin and underneath the bottom lip, um, you've got kind of this area, this this bottom mouth area, which is exposed a little bit more, and and will tend to have somewhat of a gradient uh, for that beard. But you know, what I really want you to to try and focus on at the moment is just the fact that this this beard, the way that it's beginning, the way that I'm starting it out is, is very, very simple. You know, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, I'm essentially just sketching the outline and, and trying to really capture a strong overall shape for it because ultimately all the details that you add into an artwork more often than not, whether it be strands of beard hair or, you know, different textures and materials and, and trinkets and decorations that you may add onto your characters, they are going to conform to a larger shape most of the time. And in this example, the beard strands that I ultimately place on will conform to the overall uh, shape of the basic beard that I'm drawing up here. So I've got that placed in like so, and uh, it's just a very basic kind of draft there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take down the opacity of this heads layer here so that I can see the beard a little bit more clearly. Hopefully the, the head underlying layer is still clear to you as to what's going on there. But I think that when you're drawing up and drafting up the beard and you're kind of working that shape around the face, you do want to keep in mind those underlying uh, kind of skull forms of the face so that 
it does appear as though there's, there's actual form there that the beard is stretching around. Um, the last thing you want to do is basically make it look like you've just painted on the beard without really considering where the forms of that, or at least the basic forms of the face are, are occurring and, and how that beard would be, would be forming around it. So you can see I've got that placed in like so, and it's pretty simple. At, at this point, it's essentially just an outline, a a barrier, a an area where I'm going to begin constructing the beard from. So from this point on, uh, what I will continue to do is I'll start to break this beard up a little bit more and start to add in the details. And, and this process is essentially a subdividing process where I begin to break up the larger shapes into smaller, more refined shapes. And throughout the process that I take to get to the final result of this beard, that's very much going to be a repeated set of steps that I follow throughout. So as I subdivide one large shape, I will subdivide the next and the next and the next until I'm really working with a very fine level of detail, you know, in accordance with the image resolution that I've got to work with here. So that just about does the draft for our first head. So at this point, we're ready to move on and begin adding in the details and breaking up this broader shape here. And, and you can see I will go around and, and I will tend to tweak the, uh, the shape a little bit just so that I can get it looking right before taking it too, fur too much further. And I always find that it's, it is better to make the tweaks early on before you've gone to putting in too much detail because the more you begin to articulate it, the harder it is to change later on. So um, that's that's kind of how I come at it. And um, of course, you know, all of these guys are <laughs> bald. They don't have any any top head hair. So, you know, that's al always going to come into account when it comes to designing your beards. I, I think the two kind of run hand in hand, but, you know, I wanted to keep this, this focus purely on beards. And I think that, you know, as you're designing these shapes as well, uh, you know, I say shapes, but I don't really mean flat 2D shapes. Again, you want to think about it as if these, this beard is being painted around the forms of the actual underlying skull and uh, or, or the face. And then, of course, on top of that, you, always, you also want to think of these shapes as form themselves. So, you know, if I was to draw some form guidelines around this, this beard here, and I was to articulate some of the, or describe some of the shape, the form of that mustache there, you know, you're going to get some guidelines that are a little bit like this. And that's always the way that I'm thinking about it. Now, you may actually want to lay in guidelines such as this to kind of keep them in mind, keep the form in mind as you're placing in the individual strands of, of hair or clumps of hair, rather, uh, when it comes to detailing out your beard and facial hair. But um, me personally, this is just to give you an idea of, of how I'm thinking about it as I work and how I am going to lay in these details. So... Once I'm at this point, what I can begin doing is I can begin actually starting to break this up a little bit and paint in the basic forms of hair. Again, I'm not going to go to a huge level of detail, but I am just going to sketch in some, some basic strands like so. And uh, I think that it does pay to to keep it loose and to keep it simple in the beginning because inevitably there are going to be changes that you're going to want to make. And now is the time to make them, of course. You know, you definitely want to uh, make sure that you're not tying yourself down too early when it comes to uh, designing facial hair, designing hairstyles or whatever it is. Um, you do want to keep it keep it loose to an extent. Now, up here where the beard actually begins to transition into the face, there's going to be somewhat of a fall off, okay? So it's going to be faded. Um, and there's, there will be somewhat of a gradient from hair into the, the skin of the face. So I'm just going to keep that in mind for later. But as you can see, as I place in the, uh, the beard here, I'm, I am trying to really describe those forms, and that's basically tra the trajectory of each one of these strands as I work. And, 
and you know, of course, I'm keeping in mind the lighting as well because you know the the areas of hair that are closest to the light are going to be less detailed. The areas of hair that are furthest away are inevitably going to have a lot more rendering and a lot more shadowing put into them, and that simply creates that that more darker gradient and helps it to transition into those darker gradients. So. I'm just going to place my uh, light source or an or a arrow, which basically kind of describes where my light source is coming from into the picture here so I can keep it in mind as I work. And oftentimes I will do that. Again, it just it's another thing I don't have to consciously process. I can kind of put it there and, and make sure that it's there for me to be reminded of as I'm working, which is uh, always, you know, it helps to save a little bit of brain processing power as I work. Okay, great. So I've got the basic strands placed in, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally start the inking process. So I'm going to jump over to my linear uh, layer here so that, you know, I can preserve the draft layer and, and basically work over the top of that. But, um... Yeah, I mean, this is this is really where things begin to become a little bit more detailed and a little bit more articulated. I'm actually going to make it so that the beard now, the draft for the beard is also blue. So that again, I can kind of make the distinction between the inks that I'm laying on and the actual underlying foundations that I've created for the beard. And now I'm going to draw right over the top of it. And as I lay in these strands, this is really the point at which I begin to articulate the beard to a very or somewhat of a fine degree. And I'm not going to go all out to begin with. Again, this is still a, a process, you know, making sure that I'm on my linear layer here. But this is really where uh, things do do start to get interesting. And this is just the, the linear layer, which means I'm really only dealing with line work, not necessarily a, a whole lot of rendering or anything like that. Um, I really just want to basically nail down the overall shape that I'm going for with this and, and to make sure that that's ready to go, essentially, uh, before I start to add on any of the shadows or the detail or anything like that. And this process, believe it or not, it, it actually takes probably the most amount of time sometimes because, and the most amount of thinking, of course, because this is where really the, the design gets nailed down, okay? This is, this is where everything that I've sketched down thus far becomes cemented, essentially. And, you know, once it gets to that point, there's not a whole lot of going back, I, I don't think. Like, I'm not going to change this, this overall design in a very big way now that I'm starting to lay it in on a more finessed level. But uh, as you can see, I'm kind of keeping it rough, and, and I'm sketching in the the beard as as I work it in there and I'm not going to make a solid join to the face just yet I'm going to kind of try and blend it in as best I can to the the rest of the face and that's just a matter of kind of not using a straight line you know rather than you kind of you want to use more kind of spikes like this that weave in and out or kind of uh overlay against one another I guess you could say against the face and and when it comes to this stage, my typical line work, the the, the aesthetic that, that I typically tend to go for is, is something which is very fine and very light. And so you'll see that there's not a lot of my line work here, which is very thick and using thick line weights. Much of it is is very kind of thin and fine line. And that's that's really a, a technique and a, a look, really, that that I decided to take on board based on my own inspirations and, and influences. You know, people like uh, Mark Silvestri and and Michael Turner, who who did use fine line work to really articulate uh, a lot of the the details within their finished comic book art, and. For me, I, I just like the aesthetic a little bit more, and, and I, I think when it comes to comic art, there's no real key way to do it, no no solid, like, one-way-fits-all necessarily. I, I think what it ultimately comes down to is e exactly what it is that, that you like in, in, terms of, in terms of look and in terms of visual appeal. Maybe you are someone who likes thicker line work, and maybe you, that, that really gets your that really gets your creative juices going and that inspires you and you should probably you know take on a similar aesthetic in your work then but uh again for me this is just a, a personal preference and 
I guess I, I too tend to sometimes get a little bit of flack for that. Like uh, for some reason, <laughs> people often uh, compare my artwork to to nineties uh, to a nineties look. I'm not sure really what where that comes from, but I love the nineties, so I, I see that as a massive compliment. You know, I think that a lot of the the best characters and the best artwork came out in the nineties. You know, the characters like Spawn and Witchblade and the Darkness, man. Like, of course, you know, all my influences are artists from the 90s, which probably explains my aesthetic to an extent. But, um, you know, that's just the way it is. And you can see here as I blend in the, uh, the, the facial hair to, to the face itself, I'm trying to be as careful about it as possible. But, you know, it's, it's always a process where you're using your best judgment and again there's no real wrong or right way to do it it's just a get a guesstimation game where where you kind of tweak it until it looks right and uh, i know that may sound like a little bit of a cop-out to some people but that's that's often the way that it is if i'm not going to always lay down that the perfect artwork every single time most of the time if it it doesn't look right. I'm just going to erase it and do it again and, and repeat that process until it does look right. So I, I think that always leave room for yourself to make mistakes. That's that's the process of art. It's not supposed to come out perfect. Otherwise, anybody can do it. Um, I think that the, half the reason that we, we stick with art most of the time is, is just for the fact that, you know, we... <laughs> we uh we we do get challenged by it constantly you know I, I think we'd get bored otherwise you know it'd be like you know once you, once you learn how to do taxes then then it becomes very boring and <laughs> once you learn how to do anything really anything mundane or anything interesting once you get used to it and you really master it then it becomes kind of you know something that is is less interesting less of a challenge i, I think we we inherently like things that challenge us, and and I don't, I don't, I think that that is a mindset that you do want to take on board when it when it comes to to art because it's always going to challenge you. If you think you're good already, then uh, probably you know you're just blind to your own mistakes, and and that's not really going to be, be very beneficial to you because you don't really learn any other way. You don't know how you don't learn how to get better by being good already. Which is why I often say, you know, the, the enemy of being great is, is being good. Because once you think you're good, then that, that really stops, that stifles your progress in a very big way. So here you can see around the bottom of the chin here, I've actually made it so that, again, it, I'm not really defining it as a very clean shape. It's more of a kind of jagged shape. And of course, you know, if, if you're drawing a character who's a bit more well-kept and, you know, goes to the barber occasionally or regularly, whatever, well, yeah, maybe you will have a, a much cleaner line there and a very, you know, well-shaped beard. But uh, in my particular example here, I've, I've definitely opted for something which is not a whole lot more shaggy, but it is something which is which is a bit more kind of natural looking, I guess you could say. Like, you know, maybe <laughs> if anything, he, he kind of chops his own beard. But you can see that I've I'm using this kind of jagged line, and what that gives me is the visual appearance of hair. You know, if it was just straight, it'd kind of look like he was painted on. You know, kind of like, kind of like Homer Simpson, and he's he's kind of like you know brown uh, shadow there that he's got where he grows his beard. But you know, once I've got that that line basically laid in there, I can uh, I can kind of begin articulating everything else and and keeping in mind my arrow up here. What I'm going to begin doing is I'm going to start laying in more hair, but I'm going to lay it in in different thicknesses. And look, I'm going to be kind of rendering on the fly here just because I've to an extent become very used to doing that, but I'm not going to do it in a very detailed way just yet. I find that that's a, often a trap that I fall into where I'll start rendering way too early. And that's never never a good thing because I think that you need those line weights in there first and, and those line weights need to have a, a certain defined thickness because that's going to tell you exactly how much rendering is required. If the line weights aren't really that thick and the overall look of the beard or look of the artwork is is pretty dark for example well 
you're going to want to obviously add more rendering to those areas. So I'm going to try and define these different strands or different clumps of beard hair uh, in a way that kind of describes the lighting conditions that are being essentially, you know, established here in the drawing. I'm going to try, and the way that I'm going to try and do that is by detailing out the areas that are, you know, more facing away from the light rather than toward the light. And you can see here that, that on the dark side of his face, I've got a lot more kind of strands going on. Or a lot, I don't want to say strands. Again, it's more clumps of hair. You don't want to define this uh, necessarily as individual strands because that's going to look fake. You know, from from a distance, which we are at most of the time, you're never going to see individual strands of somebody's hair or their beard. Usually it's going to blur into uh, clumps of hair, rather. it's That's the visual appeal that it's going to have. So here you can see that I'm adding strands in in a way that kind of gives a gradient to the bottom of the beard and uh, makes the bottom of that beard darker. And that's just you know, again, to, to try and give it some form. Uh, ultimately, that's what gives anything form is the lighting conditions. And you'll see that as I build this beard up, um, what's going to ultimately happen is this is just going to become more and more kind of, uh, I guess, formed in in terms of something that, that actually looks like it's got uh, almost, I guess you could say, some volume to it. Um, volume would be a, a better word to de describe the uh, the mass of this beard um, that it's it's ultimately going to have. And I am going to try and make it a darker beard. So maybe this beard would be brown rather than say uh, you know um, blonde or white. Um, so there is going to be some shadow to it. And typically, when it comes to describing darker materials or darker areas of a character, you're going to have thicker line weights and you're going to have more details. I find that, that a lot of it kind of comes from the, the line work. And from that line work, that again helps you to kind of determine and, and helps to direct the amount of rendering you're going to have to add in there. For example, if that line work is, is very fine and, and, you know, there's not a lot of it kind of going on, you know, it's not very, the line weights aren't very thick or anything like that, that's going to, you know, even on a, a visual level, it's going to cause you to kind of stave away from, from adding too many uh, details in there. Because uh, it'll just look a little bit strange otherwise. You know, the, again, the darker areas of a drawing are typically going to have a little bit more detail in them. Uh, whereas the, the lighter areas, which have, you know, core highlights essentially shining straight down on them, are going to typically have less detail. So you can see, you know, the more detail I add to these certain areas, the darker areas, such as here and here, the more rendering I'm putting in, the more detail I'm, I'm placing in there. And, you know, my render lines are very thin and I, I think that, you know, we'll have to do a tutorial on, on exactly what my process is for rendering it at some point and, and how I tend to think about it. But for now, um, you know, I would say that that a lot of this is the faster I render, the, the typically the less mistakes and the more energy my lines typically have in them. And uh, I find that, the way in which you get faster is by just constantly practicing. And I, I think for me, what really made the difference was was really going out there and, and doing some studies and trying to render out real photographs of real people uh, using the specific comic book rendering style that, that I was trying to develop. And, you know, as you as you do tend to do that, what's ultimately going to happen is is you're going to get used to how the lighting works, but in conjunction with how that translate into more of a comic book styled format. So that's really the way that that I learned how to render in the first place. And, you know, obviously looking at, at different inspirations, you know, my rendering style really started out with a, a essentially a very similar look to David Finch's rendering style. Later on, that rendering style ultimately became a more Mark Silvestri aesthetic. And one of the reasons for that is because I always found uh, David Finch's rendering style to be a bit more easier in terms of its 
its more uh, mathematical approach. You know, you essentially, uh, you are using a, a grid gradient, whereas the Mark Silvestri style is a bit more sketchy and a bit more random. So it's it's hard to emulate unless you've got a real handle on it. Um, you know, obviously that's his way of working. He's he's worked like that for for many many years, and so he's got a kind of natural knack for it. And and you'll find that to be the case with many many uh, good artists. Is usually they're hard to emulate because they've been doing what they do for so long that at this point it, it just comes naturally to them. And and at that point you can't really emulate them because even if you ask them what it is they're doing, they they could kind of give you the overall. Uh, I guess, gist of, of what their approach is and what they're thinking. But on a more kind of technical level, step-by-step -step level, it would be very hard for them to kind of describe uh, what it is that they're doing and for you to, to follow what they're saying and, and to get a real result from it. So as you can see, as I'm working here, I'm placing in more and more beard strands more and more beard clumps rather again just trying to subtly articulate you know even this here even this basic rendering that i placed in that's already starting to kind of describe the forms of the beard that i'm that i'm placing in here and uh i think that that really is is the key is using your rendering uh wisely and strategically uh, making sure that there's areas where the eyes can rest and there's areas where the eyes can become engaged with the details that you're adding into the piece. Because the thing is, if, if you're rendering every part of the image to the same level of detail, it's going to become unreadable. It won't appear like this. You can see up here in the navigator menu, even though that's a really, really tiny thumbnail of what it is I'm drawing and constructing, you can see that it actually reads. You can make out the basic forms of this beard here and... You know, I, I've really only, I mean, it's its actually moving along faster than I initially thought it would, but you can see that it, it's its really, it's readable, you know, you can make out what those forms are, and I think that, you know, that's thats how you know that your image is, is looking correct, and, and that, you know, people are able to look at it without getting confused as to what's going on, you know, you rendering is a strategic tool you want to use it wisely you don't want to be using it in a random fashion because it's it's got so many good points in terms of the way in which you can use it to lead the viewer's eye around so that they're they're paying to attention to particular parts of the image that you want them to pay attention to so that they're you know they're looking at so that certain things are standing out from, from other things and, you know, so on and so forth. And obviously to describe form and, and whatnot. Uh, again, if, if you render everything and you detail the hell out of it, then there's going to be no form. There's going to be no areas for the face to rest. And ultimately what will happen is uh, you'll just lose the, the image. It'll, it'll, be, it'll fall apart, essentially. It'll lose its tangibility, um, which is, is never something that, that you want. So... Here you can see I've got my beard uh, pretty much sorted out. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn on my beard draft layer so that I'm not getting too distracted by the uh, the underlying foundations there. And and really, I mean, at this point, it's, it's reaching a level where it's pretty much almost done in terms of the detail. And... And I know this looks really complex, um, and it is. I mean, trust me, it took me a long time to actually get to this point, but I would say if I could give you any real key pointers here for you to take away right now and for you to implement and start thinking about from the very moment is, again, really focus in on using your detail and your rendering to describe form, to make distinctions, visual distinctions within the image that are going to help the viewer actually process and digest what it is they're seeing and uh, that's going to give you this this result or a similar result you know I, I think that that's what makes an image look good if it if it works from this distance up here then it's going to work uh, close up and uh, that's always something for you, that that you do need to keep in mind especially when it comes to comic book art because ultimately at the end of the day all you really are going to be working with is is black and white inked work which is you know something that something that a lot of concept artists have never or painters have never really had to concern themselves with because um you know they've got actual tone that they can lay in with one brush stroke we have to do it uh, line by line we have to try and articulate different gradients through line work alone and, and when you've only got black and white 
there to to work with creating those gradients it, it takes a certain level of uh, finesse to to really pull off correctly so that just about wraps up this beard i think i think i'll leave it there um but you know again i'm, I'm going to get rid of some of this detail here i i think that the the gradient it really needs to fade off into the face a little bit more uh, because i'm losing uh, oh it's it's looking a little bit too much of a stark uh, transition for me so i'm going to go ahead and just you know make sure that that's being laid in there uh you know a little bit more seamlessly and you know i, I may even draw some some strands coming up here on the face maybe not see i, I think when it comes to drawing beards you, you really do have to consider the direction of the uh the overall beard fur <laughs> and and what that's generally flowing in Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's not going to read uh, correctly. It's it's not going to look right. So uh, that's what, really what I'm doing here through these adjustments. I'm I'm really trying to make it so that you know this beard is is actually looking like it's it's flowing in the right direction. And you know I I think that that ultimately it's um it's always a tweaking process and you are going to have to tweak things to an extent. You're going to have to try things out. You can see I just tried to add in a gradient there, uh, you know, going in the other direction along the cheekbone, but that didn't really work out. And, and you know, again, that's just, that's just part of the process. I mean, that's where artists and, and art in and of itself is not a step-by-step a -step, uh, recipe necessarily. There's ingredients that go into it, but um, it takes a lot of, you know, you got to constantly check on it. you got to constantly check that the, the cake isn't collapsing, uh, so to speak. And and I think that, you know, that's just, yeah. again, what, what makes being a comic book artist so fun. I mean, it is one of those art forms where you're, you're constantly going to be challenged in, in a big way. So uh, you need to embrace that and you need to like it because if you don't, and that stuff kind of scares you off a little bit, it's it's not going to be a very long run for you. You know, you'll you'll kind of tap out early on. I, I think you you do have to have a bit of a th a thick skin, and you do have to have an ability to motivate yourself, even in the the most unmotivating times, even in the toughest times, the most hopeless seeming times. You do have to have that ability to kind of you know get back up, uh, have hope that you will get better, and and to continue just moving forward because that's really what it takes. You know, no artist starts out well no no artist starts out being a total pro so okay now that i've done that let's move on to the other one can we add in a little bit more rendering here so you can see i'm kind of cutting off areas you can see i kind of made this little line here and that that just helps me to basically create a linear division of of where those highlights are occurring and then to shade underneath it as you can see um, so I kind of get the shape here, which is mostly in highlight, and then underneath that is is basically rendered out to a, a, a lesser or greater extent, uh, well, a greater extent rather. So I, I think that you know, um, for me, that that kind of helps me to just figure out you know how much rendering actually needs to go in there, or at least give me an idea. That's looking pretty good uh, from where I'm standing. So let's uh, move on to the next one. What I will probably do, no doubt, is I'll come back to this and I'll, I'll just check that it's reading right. And I often do have to go away from a piece for a while be before I can really gauge as to whether or not it's, it's looking correct. Just to get that, again, that fresh perspective. You know, I think that with artwork, you're looking at it for so long most of the time and you're there for so long that all those mistakes just become kind of like normal and you just accept them and so you don't see them. And the only way to really see where whether or not things are coming together in the right way is to just go away for a bit and and come back at, at a later time so that you can get a fresh, again, that fresh perspective, that fresh look. Because everybody else who's going to look at your artwork is going to have a, that fresh perspective. So they're the ones who are going to be picking up on the mistakes. Again, it goes back to being able to see where you're making mistakes, knowing how to fix them. But in order to see them in the first place, sometimes, again, you're going to have to go away for a bit. You're going to have to come back and, and look at it at a later time so that you can really spot them out and, and to see where, where they're going wrong. 
Um, of course, you can also just flip the image like this in uh, Manga Studio. That's going to, to help you figure out, uh, you know, whether or not you've, uh, you've made any mistakes that are major and exactly where those mistakes are occurring. So you can see here that I have realized that I actually need to darken uh, this portion of the beard up a little bit and to articulate some of that shape, which is something I just didn't really see uh, initially. And now it's, it's become obvious to me, you know, I, I've managed to spot that out. It wasn't even an obvious mistake, to be honest. And, and maybe even seeing me work on this, you might not have seen it yourself. Uh, where these areas of improvement could be because you've been working alongside me, you've been kind of watching this come together and, and those mistakes that I might be making just kind of slip under the radar for, for both of us essentially, which is, you know, it's going to happen. It is going to happen. So, all right. Again, let's move on to the next one. I got to learn to stop tweaking these things when uh, they need to be stopped tweaking. And let's do a beard now which is a little bit more neutral. Okay, so I think for this next beard, I'm going to do a beard which is a little bit more darker. So, you know, basically black to an extent, just because the last beard didn't quite turn out as dark as I wanted it to. It wasn't super light, but I think with this one, we'll, we'll push it a little further and I'll show you how to actually, you know, make it so that it really does look dark, like it's a black beard. So, um, Let's go ahead now and let's give uh, this character maybe this kind of, um, maybe a bit more of a kind of a mustache, but with mutton chops. And what I'll do is I'll show you how to create a little bit of a gradient of stubble as well on top of that, uh, because I think that that's something which I know for me really did kind of baffle me to an extent as to how to pull that off in a, in a, in a way that actually made it look as though it was stubble. So let's go ahead and do that now. Again, we'll, we'll give this character a mutton chop. So let's make him look like he's got a beard that looks a little bit more like a uh, Wolverine, uh, Wolverine's facial hair. <laughs> okay. So now again, the first step, we're going to go back down to our drafts layer, and the first step I'm going to take is to, again, articulate the basic shape of the beard, bearded area of this character's face. Or, you know, the, the basic volume of the beard, you know, establishing the style, the overall uh, amount of form that that beard is going to have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So let's, uh, again, place in the mustache. And what we can do is just make this one a little bit more of a different mustache to the last one. So maybe this one's a, a bit more kind of, you know, thin looking. So we won't make it as, as bushy necessarily. And we can have it uh, kind of, you know, dropping down over the corners of the mouth a little bit more, I think, you know, going down into a point uh, toward the chin. And then, of course, we've got the uh, the, the mutton chops uh, on either side there, which I would like to uh, to kind of, you know, really make super kind of wild looking, I guess. You know, again, kind of like Wolverine. Something like this. I think looks good. And, you know, that, that mustache is probably a little bit too sharp <laughs> for this particular character that we've uh, we've got going on now but let's let's go ahead and just make that a little bit more ragged looking I think uh, you know something like this he's, he's looking like a biking now with that bald head I think so uh, so we've got we've got that place down again you know this ultimately gets very fast it's a very fast process uh, in this beginning point but it is the most important since this is where everything else is going to be built upon. And, um, you know, I think we'll, again, we'll make it so that that mustache is, is kind of going across the lip this time, I think. I'd like it to be a little bit maybe neater looking. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Now that I've got the basic foundation for the beard shape done, let's go ahead and just turn that blue and begin working on the linears, really defining how that beard's going to look. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to start outlining the beard. But remember, this time I want to make it a little bit darker than, than the previous beard. So 
Again, I'm keeping in mind the form of the beard as I work. So this one's going to come basically straight down. It's going to be less uh, parted and, and more, you know, follow the shape of or that the m upper muzzle portion of the mouth. Like so. All right, looking good. So he's he's looking like a real, real, real bad fella. Um, I guess to an extent he's he's a little bit less trustworthy than the initial beard we placed in. One of the reasons that I've made it so that all of these characters are kind of bald and, and they're lacking a certain amount of, uh, you know, actual head hair is because I, I wanted to really bring home the point that, you know, these these beards here, they, they alone really do determine how you feel about the overall character. And I, I think that that comes into play in a big way. It's important when you're designing a character to actually know exactly what your design assets are and, and how each one of those assets essentially allow you to create a design which is which is memorable and which is relatable in in unique and interesting ways and and so you'll notice um, you know this guy he he feels different already from from the first guy that we we created the beard of. And I think that that, you know, that really does, it, it, it can determine the age of your character, it can determine their, their role in society, it can determine a lot of things just by, you know, face value alone. So what you'll notice is that I actually created a, uh, a bit, I'm much more happy with the way that this beard here uh, transitions into the face. And it's probably because I did it a lot better than the first initial character. And that's going to happen from time to time. Usually your second artwork or your second piece is going to be better than the first one. So later on, I, I do think that I will I will change up the transition here uh, once I've finished up with this guy and, and I'll just kind of, you know, work on that and tweak it a little bit more. But for now, um, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start laying in the shadows for this beard. So this is really where the darkness is going to start to come from. I'm going to use the same light source that I used in the initial drawing that I created. So we'll, we'll use that as a bit of a guide. But for now, I'm just going to lay in the, the basic shadows for this, this character here. And I think that really, um, when it comes to this point... The shadows are just thicker, and because they're thicker, they're going to be, you know, surrounding those forms on a much uh, more dense level. So, you know, I, I'm going to try and articulate that as best as I can in a way that isn't going to lose the overall shape and design, in a way that's actually going to look good. Um, sometimes that's difficult, you know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, shadows for me is, has always been a, a challenge in a, in a quite a big way, but... I think that the way I deal with it is just by keeping in mind those those fundamental forms and, and trying to describe them as best I can with the shadow. If I can keep in mind those forms, then usually it's going to be a little bit easier for me to achieve what it is that I'm trying to achieve. So you can see me, you know, just, again, describing the overall form of that, that mustache thinking of it in terms of those basic kind of form guidelines that I was illustrating for you before and just kind of, yeah, articulating it. And I think that what happens when, when you've got a character who's got a darker uh, material or a darker beard, darker hairstyle, what really happens is that at the end of the day, the, the shadows just increase in their size and the highlights begin to shrink. Uh, basically, that's that's the basic gist of it. Um, now, of course, as that beard transition into the upper area of the face, I'm going to make sure that I'm leaving that uh, relatively clean. I don't want to, you know, I might give it a little bit of rendering, which is a little bit thicker than the rest. Um, but, you know, that for the most part is, is the way that I'm going to go about it. So what I'll do now is I'll begin filling in some of these uh, these darker areas here. And I'm just going to kind of draw them in. Um, what I'll get rid of is the draft that I've created just so that I can see everything a little bit better. And I'll begin to drop this in. And I guess, like, for me, again, just to take the pressure off, because I know shadowing, it, it's, it's difficult for everybody. The, the less I tend to stress about it and to make it so that it's important to get right, the easier my time is going to be, I find. And... 
I think that if you can kind of take on that mindset, not only are you going to have a lot more fun with your artwork as you're creating it, not only are you going to be a lot more de-stressed and relaxed about it, but on top of that, it's probably going to turn out even better than it initially would have if you're being super, super careful and stressed out about it. Um, because people, when it comes to looking at your artwork, they can tell whether or not you're stressing about it. It's in the line work itself. It, it really does come through onto the page. So I think that, you know, you really do want to try your best to obviously stay conscious of, of how everything's working. Like, again, keeping in mind those forms and the light direction, the light positioning as it shines down onto whatever it is that you're shading. But at the same time, I would also say that it's important to uh, make sure that you're you're relaxing it and that you're having fun. You know, take the pressure off of yourself a bit sometimes. You know, it doesn't always need to be perfect. And it really is, even for the pros. Like, I'm sure that they have yet to reach the artwork that they believe is their best artwork. You know, I think that we're always striving to do better and we're always striving to, to be our best. But, you know, until we get there, we have to settle for, for what we can do at the current time. And that's not always going to be uh, what we feel is our best. But I think that, you know, through those artworks that aren't necessarily our best, we learn and, and we begin to... Um, learn how to navigate around the mistakes that we might be making and we begin to learn how to do things in a more optimal way and how to achieve the effects that we're trying to achieve. If we stopped every time we thought an artwork wasn't going to work out and we never followed through on anything and we just gave up, well, we wouldn't learn those things. We would never progress. And I think that, you know, that's that's a real shame. Like, I think failing... And failing often and quickly is a incredible ally and asset that you have in your artistic arsenal to improve. Uh, people say practice. Yes, that's important. But I think that failing and learning from those failures is an even more potent way of getting better um, because that helps you to navigate as to where, where it is you need to focus your attention on getting better. That helps you to give you something to sink your in teeth into. And it, it's also like it, it helps you to figure out where those challenges lie so that you can actually tackle them. So as you can see, I'm slowly laying in this beard and I'm really, uh, I'm almost building it up in layers. And you can see this bottom layer down here. It's mostly in shadow. But as we get toward the top, you know, I begin to make it so that those layers are kind of a little bit more white. And that's, they're white at the moment because there's no rendering on them, obviously. You know, this is a darker beard, so it's going to have much more rendering and, and detail in it. But uh, for now, that's that's really, I'm, I'm quite happy with how this is working out. I, I really didn't expect it to uh, go this way. I thought I was going to have a bit more trouble with it. But again, it's probably because I'm, I'm talking now and I'm taking the pressure off myself to make this perfect. If, if I didn't... If I wasn't able to talk to you as I as I create this, probably I'd be focused on it way too much and uh, focused on getting it perfect. So, again, if you know, in those situations where you are stressing out and you're trying to get things to look a hundred percent, maybe maybe it would do you better to turn on some music or to turn on a movie and to kind of tune out from what you're doing in the present moment a little bit and to to give yourself some distance from it. Sometimes that's going to do you more good than than anything else, and uh, we we just need that sometimes. I, at least in my experience, I need that. Um, there has been so many times where I've kind of, you know, I've I've tried so hard to make something perfect, and I've spent days and days and days trying to get it to the place that I I really see it being at, and then, you know, I, I do get it there eventually, but. Ah uh, man, I, you know, I could have achieved, I could have done more. I could have learned more in the amount of time it took me to to complete that one piece and or really to redo that one piece. You know, I, I will go back and I'll redo artwork that really, you know, it doesn't need to be redone and it, it kind of kills my, my schedule and, and causes me to spend more time on something that, that I really should be spending time on it. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess that's just the perfectionist in me and it's something that I do battle with from time to time. You know, I, I think that a lot of artists do battle with that. 
And that's why, <laughs> I guess, to an extent, I don't think I would necessarily be... You know, I don't think if, if I went out there and I did a comic on my own, I would do it definitely for the love of it because the amount of time it would take me to do would, would just be so long that financially, in, in terms of the financials that it would take to actually get it done, it wouldn't really be all that viable. And, you know, I, I think that that's why, you know, I hope to get to a place someday where I've got enough savings and, and investments to kind of just do what I love to do every day without necessarily even getting paid for it. But I think that that while you're, you know, working in a studio or, or something like that, that that is one really great way to learn how to let go and, and make those mistakes and hand in things that are less sometimes than perfect and to just get the job done on time, maybe not to a perfect level, but a decent level. And, you know, that you know, they're two facets of the same coin and, and you do need both, I think, to, to be an artist and to actually create a career in this form of work, you do need the speed. And also, I think that, you know, your quality of work does come into it, obviously, um, because that's what's going to set you apart. You know, if you're the guy who always takes shortcuts and you're, you, you know, you're kind of handing in work, which is subpar, but you're getting it in on time, then you'll be the guy that, that people go to uh, in order to get things done on a deadline, right? But you won't be the superstar. You know, the superstar may take longer to do things, but, you know, they're the, they're the ones that, that everybody seeks. And, and they already know that they're the kind of guy that's going to take a little bit longer to complete the work, but they also know that they're going to get a better a better quality. And, you know, it's the same in, in comics. It's the same in movies as well uh, and video games. You know, I think it really depends on the kind of artist that you want to be. And, and if you are the artist, it takes as long as it needs to take in order to reach a finished result that actually looks incredible and, and blows people away, then you've got to be that artist. You know, there's no, there's no real shaking that, unfortunately. I think that you, you will do better to just, you know, keep doing what you do. Try to get faster at doing what you do, but, you know, don't necessarily sacrifice your art because you're going to hate it. You're going to hate having to sacrifice your art and it's going to crush your soul. So uh, keep doing what you do. Optimize your process as much as possible. For example, you know, for me, I, I instead of taking my artwork to finish refined pencils, instead of taking this beard to a finished refined version in terms of pencils, I just jump on to the ink straight away now and, and I create the inked artwork um, over the top of those foundations and, you know, sometimes really rough pencils. But I find that that really has, has almost doubled uh, my speed in terms of finished a complete piece of artwork. So uh, that's something to consider. Now, what you'll notice me doing here is is I'm actually going to begin subdividing uh, this beard up into more kind of uh, refined levels of detail. And so, you know, this is kind of like the next process. Once you've got those main forms articulated, once it's reading, you can see up here on my navigator that that's still reading quite well. You know, we may have to make room down here to, to really spread that highlight down, I think. But, um, yes, yeah, so as I was saying, now, now I'm at the point where I'm starting to uh, break this up a little bit into, into more finesse. Uh, detail, if you will, and really that that's important here because um, if I jump straight onto the rendering without putting these these more subtle details in, I think that for me it's it's not you know when I do this and I start to articulate these different areas to a higher level of detail, um, it helps me to it helps guide me as to where that the main areas of rendering really need to go. So um, that's you know, something to consider, I think, for uh, for anybody. But yeah, I'm just going to get rid of some of that area. And as I begin to lay in the, the transition between the face and the beard here, I'm going to start to, I'm going to articulate it with very subtle line weights. And I think that, you know, with a darker beard, you're going to want to do that. Uh, to an extent, but not too much. You know, I'm making breaks where I need to make breaks uh, in that line there, just so that 
ultimately at the at the end of the day the, there is a there's a distinction between the face and the beard but it it still looks as though it's it's kind of blending in there a little bit like i don't want this to be a clean cut you know cut out of of a beard that's stuck onto his face it's just going to look fake and it's going to look a little bit contrived i i think you know that's and that's not really the look that I want to go for. So now that I've got these basic shadows placed in, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump onto the rendering phase. So I'm going to jump onto this layer here, the rendering layer, and I'm going to begin articulating all these shadows here to an even higher level of detail and really start to create the darker tones that this beard is going to have in general in comparison to the first beard that I laid down. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Um, you can see that I'm starting on the darker side of the face and I'm starting to lay in those those very thin, very fine render lines. Now, the difference with a darker beard is the render lines themselves are going to be slightly thicker and they're going to be close together. And what that's going to do is that's going to increase the density of that tone, okay? So it's going to make a darker tone. Um, and again, the way that I'm getting that darker tone is by simply thickening up those render lines, making them less fine, and putting them closer together so that they're, they're more densely packed. And that's how you get darker tones on, on your rendering, and, and personally how I like to approach it. Um, I think that that, for me, has, has probably been the easiest way to think about it. And a lot of this stuff is just you know, finding ways in which you can process what it is you need to do in an understandable way so that you can kind of take that principle and repeat the process again. So, you know, once you know the principles of rendering, then you can really render anything. And I think that's the real key. You know, I think we we look for techniques and stuff to, to do what, you know, someone else might be doing in, in front of us. But I don't know if we really necessarily always understand those underlying principles. We don't understand the, the why of what they're doing. And so uh, for me, that's always been something that I've wanted to know and what's always helped me um, because otherwise you kind of, you know the how and, you, and you're taking the steps you need to take to, to achieve the how, but you're always kind of guessing as, as to why you're doing them. And then when it comes to kind of taking off the training reel, wheels and going out on your own, then you have to guess your way through it. And you have to, you know, you always have to figure out that why eventually in order to really master what it is you're doing. So that's what I've uh, found in my experience. So, you know, I'm slowly articulating this beard, making sure that it remains readable up here in my navigator screen. And really, I'm, I guess I'm shading the mustache here in a way which is almost cylindrical. You know, here's the highlight. It's going to come around here. And then, you know, I've got the darker areas as, as that highlight slowly transition into darker areas of the beard or the overall style of the beard. And you can see, again, I'm kind of articulating the, the outlines of, of where those midtones are going to fall first like here, for example, and then I'm painting, or, well, I'm drawing in, I'm inking in those those tones. So here I go again, again, placing in that rendering, and then, you know, at the bottom of the beard, doing what I need to do there. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading in here at the top of the beard, again, just to really articulate the, the shape there. Again, it is cylindrical. I don't necessarily want that lighting direction to be coming straight from the top, otherwise it's going to look a little bit flat for me. So yeah, so here we go, drawing in the rendering for the uh, the side of that beard. Darkening that up a little bit so that it, it's looking correct. And I, I think that this really is, for me, the uh, the trickiest part is just making sure that the beard's transitioning correctly uh, into the face. Um, because if it's not, that's that's when you'll you'll kind of tend to, to notice a little bit of weirdness and, and trouble. Uh, so I'm just going to I'm going to tweak this as I go and and try and get it looking correct, um, but it will be a little bit of a process. Uh, I can s see that already, but you know again we all have our little challenges I think, and we all have those again those areas that that we personally get stuck on, and and that goes for 
people have been doing this for a long time and people who have been doing this for for a small amount of time you know we all have our our sticking points i guess you could say that that take up most of our attention and at this point it is more the little finer details that that really have me uh stumped at times you know really weird like nuanced areas such as blending a beard into a face that kind of you know makes me scratch my head sometimes and usually when i do get stuck like that like when it comes to rendering out a beard and how it should be done in a, in a comic book type style I, I find people who have already done it who inspire me and i try to figure out how they went about rendering out their beards and shading their beards for their comic book characters and um i try to emulate them and i try to figure out again why they've done it in that particular way um, you know, again, Mark Silvestri for me is a huge influence, and I, I guess that I, I probably took a lot of of what I do know now from uh, his, his his work. Yeah, I mean, whoever your uh, your favorite artist is, whoever your influences are, whether they be Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, um, whoever it is, uh, you know, look at how they do beards. And try to try to take on a similar aesthetic, and that's really going to help you out. It's going to give you a starting point. You know, ultimately, obviously, you're going to take what you learn from them, and you're going to turn it into your own style. You know, that their their style will become another ingredient in your ultimate style. But yeah, I think that that's really uh, where what I would say uh, in terms of that. <laughs> you know, if you're ever stuck. You know, if you need to know how to do a leather jacket, for example, or or whatever it may be, whether it be a black beard or like I'm doing here, then look at how your influences are doing them. Look at how your inspirations are doing it. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just draw in some some really light kind of white rendering just to get those really fine uh, articulated uh, areas of, of beard and uh, really kind of blend it in. I think to to those shadowed areas because that's that's a little bit of a stark transition for me at this point and you know I I used to be a little bit adverse to kind of um painting in white line into my shadows but and I don't know why that was just you know a thing maybe I felt like that I had to uh make sure I was pulling all these fine details off purely with with one black uh, line but you know that's not the case at all i mean you know you gotta sometimes like go of those weird little uh ideals that you have when it comes to art i think and uh i ultimately did let that go as you can see it it's an incredible incredibly valuable uh tool to have um or a thing to be able to do is is to kind of blend back into those shadows with the highlights but i just didn't really i guess take that on board in the in the beginning so yeah, all right. So now that we've got the uh, the beard placed in, let's actually give this guy a little bit of, uh, I guess, uh, stubble. I guess you could say. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to I'm going to start from the bottom here, and I'm going to begin uh, just placing in uh, these little little tiny like subtle lines. And as I do place them in, I'm going to uh, try and make them thicker as they turn away from the light. Uh, you know, especially around this chin area. And I'm going to try and be as fast with it as possible as well. So, uh, you know, I think that the faster you go sometimes, it, it stops you from getting into that habit of thinking about it too much. And it really allows you to, to an extent, disconnect. Again, give yourself some distance and uh, to focus on just having a little bit of fun, relaxing a little bit. It takes your mind to a, to a higher level of thinking, I think, in all honesty. And yeah, I mean, that's, you know, a, a big part of drawing is, is really thinking about what it is you're drawing. And, uh, you know, I think that that can take up a lot of processing power sometimes. And you know, you you got to learn how to optimize it and, and learn how to share out that processing power, what needs it the most. And, and most of the time, it's going to be, you know, more your creativity that, that needs it. It's going, you know, the, the fundamentals that you learn ultimately in practice, that's going to take care of itself. Uh, once you practice that a few times, you'll know how to do it automatically. You know, you'll know how to automatically keep your characters in proportion without really 
necessarily having to count out the, the amount of head heights every time you, you want to draw up a character. That's going to become an automatic process. So don't concern yourself with it. Relax. It's going to be in proportion. Have faith. Once you've learned that fundamental, for example, and yeah, I mean, that's... That's really the way that I like to think about it. I think if you think about things too much, anything you have learned, it kind of tricks your brain into thinking that you don't already know it. Um, so your brain's like, damn, did I learn it right the first time? And and kind of goes back and, and forgets what it is that you learned and how you learned it and starts to re try and relearn it in a new different way because it thinks that the way you initially, initially learned it didn't really work because you're second guessing yourself. And uh, that's that's an actual thing that... that people get. You'll notice that when you think about things too much, that's usually when you do your worst work rather than when you're just naturally doing it and you're not thinking about it. So here we have the uh, the stubble of this, of this guy's beard and uh, you can see that it's really, really thick down here near the bottom. It's, it's very, very dark and then as we get toward the top of the lip here, it kind of starts to, to fade out a little bit. And uh, for me, that's that's kind of, you know, oh, that achieves a, a nice uh, stubbly looking effect. He's got a little bit more stubble there than than uh, really you could call stubble. But I mean, it's it's working for now. So I'm just going to go in and, and, you know, noodle out some more details on this guy's beard. Again, I'm not quite sure if I'm 100 percent happy with it. So I'll just start thickening up some of those areas, trying to improve upon that gradient that I created. And that's often what I'll do is, is I'll, it, it's always a process. You know, I, I think that that's the important thing to remember. You're not always going to get this stuff down the first initial time. It's, it's going to take a, sometimes it's going to take a, another kind of fresh perspective to, to really uh, nail it. And that's kind of like the, the, my, my way of thinking uh, at the moment is, is I'm starting to, to really try and, uh, try and fix up and refine what I've already done here for this guy. Um, now, especially up here where the transition happens upon the face, I want to start to, you know, really fix that up a little bit. And again, it was probably because I was thinking about it too much that it didn't work out the first time. That's just, again, what happens. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I always, I try to relax as much as possible. I probably again I probably would have had a lot more trouble with this if I was focusing on it any harder. Luckily I've got the uh the narration here that I'm doing to to distract me from the process a little bit. But um yeah, that's looking good. So now we've got the we've got the dark beard here. We've got the uh um, we've got the beard which is I guess yeah, you know, this would be kind of like a brown beard. You know, it's got a darker overall tone there. And what I'll do now is I'm going to do a more intimidating looking beard. So uh, maybe the more, um, you know, the, uh, the more threatening, the more threatening looking beard. We've got a, a nice opportunity here to do the unkempt or the homeless, aka homeless beard. So we'll do that for the last guy and then we'll just kind of compare them and hopefully have a nice set of the three, the three bearded musketeers here. Okay, so again, what we're going to do now is we're going to do more of a, a scruffy, longer, unkempt beard for this last example. And in this last example, I'm going to go for a tone or a color which is going to be on the verge of white. So very, very light, very little rendering and very little detail just to show you how I go about sharing out that detail throughout the different tones and materials and, and colors that, that I will tend to use when it comes to creating facial hair or any kind of hair really. So uh, with this one, it, it, it will kind of, it'll be a less is more type situation where we're articulating only the areas of the beard that need to be articulated. And we'll also go through this one a little bit quicker now. We've, we've done this twice, so we should be getting to the point now where we're a little bit uh, used to the process and, and where we're able to, to start moving things along on a, on a more faster pace. And, and this is really the going to be the... Uh, pace at which I do tend to to draw these out on a on a regular basis. So uh, let's uh, get on with the last bearded demo that I'm going to do for you here and uh, check it out. Okay, so we're going to go back to the drafts layer of our beards group that we've created, 
And now I'm just going to go back to my pencil tool and I'm going to quickly begin sketching out again the shape of the beard and uh, just really try to nail that down first and foremost so that I've got a bit of a, a guide to work with as I begin adding in the details and articulating it to a more refined level. So this particular beard, uh, the mustache is, is quite thick so I'm going to make sure that I, I try to put that in there as much as possible and really all of these mustaches are, are actually quite thick so um, I guess uh, to an extent there's there's no huge amount of difference between them. I'm going to attempt to make this one as, as bushy as possible though, you know, just to just to change things up a little bit. So again, this mustache is going to go right over the top of his lip and he's going to have a little bit more facial hair all around. So you'll probably notice as I do construct the general shape of this beard here that as I, as I have been working on these beards, I've become more and more confident and more and more comfortable in doing these up. And, and it's it's starting to happen on a, on a faster pace. So one of the reasons for that, again, is just because I've, I've now had a little bit of uh, practice. I've had a chance to warm up a little bit. Now, this particular beard, it, it comes up a little bit further on the face, uh, all the way up. And... Really, I'm going to try and put that in. I think that that's a very big part of the to the general aesthetic of this particular beard. It comes down a little bit, I guess, but it's quite high up. So there it is there. Now, what I do want to point out here is just how much of an impact these general shapes do have on the overall appearance of the character and, and how they, again, feel to us. I mean, it's such a, it's such a potent level you know uh of of the design that in terms of how it visually comes together and how it visually looks to the viewer that i can't really reiterate on that enough just how important it is to to really you know make sure that that even though this is a very um preliminary version of the of the structure of the entire beard or character or whatever it is you're working with because you know ultimately all the design elements are going to start out in a, in a very similar fashion this this just makes such a difference in terms of the character that you're creating and and i guess this is more of a design uh element in in a way but you'll notice that looking at each of these characters they all have a very different feeling and that's really the point that i wanted to make with them you know even looking at this kind of the trustworthy chart of beards that that I'm working from you can really see how how it's all put into practice and and how it all comes together in the end and and how all of that is applied um this beard especially is going to be starkingly uh different in terms of the way that we feel about the character as I bring it through to completion I do I do kind of want you to to try and keep that in mind as you work and as you design your characters because it's it's a very important, again, thing thing to consider uh, when it comes to drawing comics and, and drawing anything, really. Uh, you want to always add in that, that unique kind of spin, that that unique difference that, that, that really makes up that particular character. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to change this draft that I've created of our last beard to blue. And you can see that it's somewhat blending into the underlying sketch and it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on exactly with those neck muscles, but there's enough there for me to, to tell what's going on and for me to recall. So let's begin articulating this beard. Now remember, it's going to be much more kind of shaggy and, and kind of less neat than the others. It's also going to be longer, and on top of it, it's going to have more of a white tone, a lighter tone. Okay, so this is really where you want to try, if you're someone who puts a lot of detail into your artwork, and you're really kind of into the habit of articulating every single thing, this is going to be a great exercise for you to do, because it really teaches you to use the detailing and the the rendering only where it's needed and it there's an ultimate goal here that we're trying to achieve as well um, we're not just randomly going to be putting in detail we're going to be very careful about it and I think that when it comes to lighter textures lighter materials and, and you know such as this beard here that that we're creating this is this is what really teaches you to to use your 
detail and the amount of detail that you have to spend on the artwork wisely you know that's that's really what i think a good comic artist is always conscious of is you know because it's easy to detail it's easy to detail the heck out of it, out of an artwork but when it comes to articulating the things that really need to be articulated to a specific level of detail uh that's a whole different ball game to get it to read correctly, to get it to be depicted correctly, that really uh, takes a certain amount of practice, takes a certain amount of uh, logic as well. Now, again, you do want to have fun while you're doing this stuff up, obviously. You know, I've been harping on about that for the entire time. It's, it's very important that you enjoy what it is you're doing in the moment. But at the same time, you do. there are going to be times where you're going to want to think about this stuff. So you can see here, I'm again blending in the uh, the beard to the, the overall face, and, and I'm getting a little bit more used to that now, so I'm becoming more comfortable with it. And we'll just blend it into where his hairline would be, but for now I'm going to start articulating these, these uh, kind of long strands of beard that's coming off of his face. Uh, that's obviously a very obvious uh attribute that is part of this character's design in in terms of their facial hairstyle but uh yeah you know it's i just tend to build it up and you can see that at this point maybe i've been laying in my lines and have kind of been sketching them in there but because i've been drawing these three because i've drawn three of these beards now and i'm in the process of drawing the third one I'm kind of laying down these strokes uh, in one fell swoop, as you can see. And I think that rather than sketching in your artwork, that tends to capture a little bit more energy and a little bit more pizzazz within the line work. And especially when it comes to beards, which do have a certain, you know, natural appeal to them. You know, you've got that flowy texture to them. I think that becomes especially important. And, you know, again, you know, you're going to always need time to, to warm up and, and that's going to take a certain amount of time every single time that you set out to draw something. But uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, know that you're going to, as you become more confident, you're going to lay your, down, your lines down with a lot more assuredness and you'll probably end up laying them down in, in one fell swoop. And if you're not, you do want to try and get to that point, I think. You know, especially when it comes to inking. Now, in terms of that, oftentimes I will re-go over most of my link inked line art uh, multiple times as I, as I lay down those strokes. And uh, that's just because, for me, in order to get the kind of lines I want, I can't get those lines 100% uh, the way that I want to get them in one fell stroke like that sometimes. And it does take a few tries to, to really get it to where I, I want it to be at. So it depends on the kind of line that you want as well. And I think if you're if you're using ink that, that is, you know, brushed in, then obviously you're going to be not sketching in that those those details. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, so at this point, I've got the basic beard kind of drawn in there, and and you can see that there's not a whole lot of detail. I mean, there there is actually more, a little bit more detail in it than than the previous few beards did have at this stage. But now I'm I'm kind of you know going to be loosening up on the rendering and taking my my foot off of the the rendering accelerator so to speak and and now i'm going to be you know a lot more kind of careful i'm going to be constantly looking up here in my navigator menu whoops to make sure that you know that's all coming together the way that it needs to come together as well and reading correctly as a lighter tone now again you know i'm being a little bit risky here by not really defining my line weights 100 percent yet and that's because at this point, I'm kind of, you know, I'm getting a little bit too cocky. I'm, I'm starting to get ahead of myself somewhat. So I do need to make sure that I'm maintaining those those basic rules. Because if I don't, uh, that's when I start to run into problems. You know, if I don't start, if I start to take shortcuts, 
It'll only take a certain amount of time. Maybe I won't mess up, but sometimes I will, and it'll it, it won't take long for me to start you know losing the image. I think that when you articulate your line work with well thought out levels of uh, of waiting. Um, what that helps you to do is it does again help you to gauge how intense the tones need to be in a in a given area of the artwork. Uh, without that, I think you're kind of building it up as you go, and you're kind of guessing as to where things need to be placed, which is kind of what I'm doing now, and it's it's already messing up for me. I, I think so. I really do need to make sure that I'm I'm staying conscious of this stuff. Now I'm placing in some light rendering over there. Um, on the dark side of the head, again, we're going with the same light source that, that I've been going with uh, this entire time for the previous heads. And just, you know, as the beard or as the, the overall forms that hold together the beards turn away from the light, uh, I'm just, I'm making those areas darker. And I'm trying to articulate them in a way that that looks accurate, that, that really does make it look like these beards have so, some real volume to them. Now, because this beard is a little bit more unkempt, I do want to give it a, a rugged appearance. So despite it being white, I almost want it to look as though it's a little bit dirty to an extent. But as you can see, even up here, like those those little details, that light rendering I've already added in is, is making a difference. Now, up here underneath the lip, these areas are going to be a little bit darker as they go down into the rest of the beard. So I want to, you know, make sure I'm rendering those out a little bit more than, than the rest. And we're going to have kind of like the most highlighted section will come around here. So I want to keep that in mind. That as, as we lead our line work away from that main core highlight section, what's going to happen is we're going to use thicker and thicker rendering. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really the pattern that I'm going in. Again, placing, trying to articulate these lines and trying to remember to, um, you know, at some point, especially with this light line rendering, I do tend to merge the line articulation and the rendering, or the line weight articulation rather, and the rendering uh, into one uh, process, which again, you know, that's, it's risky as business for me. I'm not going to lie. It's it's definitely risky business, but I find that it's even more useful to make sure that you're using the line weights uh, when it does come to darker tones. So if you are going to uh, skimp out on the line weights and articulate them later on, make sure that you're not doing that necessarily on the uh, darker kind of uh, materials or styles that you might, or rather uh, artwork that you might be uh, using or working on rather. So here we go, placing in uh, some more lines, rendering lines. You can see how fine these are, and I am keeping them light on purpose because, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm capturing that lighter tone within the beard. And I think, um, for me, I do want this, the trajectory of this particular uh, part of the beard to run down off of the chin there because that's looking a little bit too... Um, you know, it was blending in with the, the wrong part of the beard there, and, and I didn't like it. And even here, like, again, you know, some of that isn't quite breaking up the way that it needs to break up. So I, I'm just erasing that rendering, and I'm starting again, and, and I'm laying it in to to see whether or not this is going to work a little bit better. And it's just because I've I've placed, you know, these some of these rendering lines a little bit too close together, you know, then... And I've made them all the same tone. I've made them all the same distance apart. And that is, again, ultimately what causes uh, your image to just flatten out. And that's never something that is going to look good. You're always going to have to go back and you're going to have to fix that up. There's a lot of artists out there who will tell you that they've looked back on their artwork. And after spending hours and hours working on it, me included where they don't realize till later that all that detail they sp all that time they spent on detailing that the heck out of their artwork in the end they, they lost the entire image and um, they do end up having to go back and, and redoing a lot of that stuff because you know and sometimes it's not as hard as it sounds you know usually that just involves you erasing 
uh, certain areas of detail, especially when it comes to detail that might be in the background of your scene, for example. Usually you'll want to get rid of some of that, but uh, if it is over detailed, because what will tend to be happening when when the viewer is getting a little bit lost as to what they're looking at, it'll usually be because they they get the depth that perception of the foreground and the background is getting messed up because of the level of detail in both of them. Most of the time it's going to be a case where the level of detail in the foreground, background and middle ground are the same levels of density. And that, uh, again, you know, the detail that you add into your artwork does help to create that depth. It helps to describe the form. And it helps, again, to just lead the viewer's eye around the artwork. And, you know, I guess the reason that I'm bringing out rendering so much uh, in this tutorial here is because, as you'll see, a lot of this is uh, rendering. That's, that's what, you know, rendering our hair ultimately comes down to, is uh, placing in these very finessed kind of details and articulating the the texture of the, the beard, along with the, the lighting that is, is being placed on it with these subtle levels of detail to one degree or another. And um, I guess, you know, ultimately that's, it requires a certain amount of balance. That's, that's really what I'm looking for, I think. You know, ultimately, all of this comes down to a matter of balance and, and making sure that, that you're balancing out that detail in the accurate way, according to light conditions. I think really what what you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to at all times is the lighting and making sure that the lighting is congruent with itself, making sure that every part of the artwork is consistent with that light because if it's not, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, yes, it may not be starkingly obvious what's wrong with the artwork, but uh, what will tend to happen is uh, people will just find that there's something off and... And they won't know why. It just won't possibly make sense or, or look correct. And, you know, that's never a good thing. So so here we have, you know, our, our last character. And he's coming together quite well. I'm quite happy with the way it's looking. Um, again, you can see me erasing some of that rendering there to make sure it reads. And if you look at this navigator up here, you can see that, that all of these beards are reading... Uh, quite well in terms of the amount of detail that they have within them. And you can see that each of their tones and their the amount of detail within them has created a, a unique kind of hue, uh, well, a unique uh, value. Uh, so you can tell what beard is white. You can tell what beard is kind of a darker brown color. And you can tell what beard is black. So, you know, that's that's one thing that kind of took me a while to get to be honest with you, because I think in the beginning I found it difficult to create that kind of distinction within my artwork when I was designing different characters. I learned how to do a beard one way, and that was really the only way I knew how to do it without really varying up any of the material or the or the uh, the tone or the color of that beard. So, and, you know, same goes for hair, obviously. So... Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create another layer underneath the line work that I've done for the beards. And I'm just going to make this the, the beard background. And what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to color in and fill the background of the beard in with white so that, you know, the, uh, the background face isn't really obscuring any of the beard or any of the detail. And, and you know, there's a clear kind of definition as to what's going on there visually. So I'm going to go ahead here and just erase down the length of the beard around the mustache. Especially on this one here, you can see that jawline in there. We're just going to, and again, this is just widening it out on another layer, so I'm not actually erasing the head, right? Again, we want to work non-destructively uh, when it comes to this stuff. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and we can bring our heads back. So let's turn them from not being gray and let's ramp up the uh, the opacity. Ah, oh, sorry, not being blue. Ramp up the opacity. And, you know, there, there we have it. We've got our characters with beards. Now, what I'm going to do 
to really wrap this up is I'm just going to uh, go in and add in the finishing touches, especially around on this guy because you know some of those line weights aren't exactly uh, what they need to be at this point, point. Um, and it's not quite reading in the way that it needs to read. But you know that's that's pretty much good to go for the for the most part, I would say. So let's uh, let's move on and really start to polish up the final artwork that we've created here and uh, and bring it home. Okay, so at this point we're ready to jump on to the final stages of these three illustrations where I'll really begin to articulate the line weights to a more polished, finer degree and just make sure that as a whole, all three of these characters are reading correctly along with their beards. You know, now it's really down to uh, looking at what I've got, or what you've got in your case, and making the adjustments that need to be made based on what you've already got there. And I think that really at this end stage, that's that's what is left to do because you can't really, you know, read the image as a whole and, and know what needs to be done while you're in the process of doing it until you have got it to a somewhat finished level. And really, these characters at this point, along with their beards, again, are pretty much done, you know, for the most part. All the rendering is in there, all the uh, shadows, all the line work, and for the most part, you know, the main line weights have been established, but now it's just it's just going in there and making sure that everything is as polished as it possibly could be, which sometimes is the step which takes the most amount of time. Uh, other times it really only requires a few tweaks here and there. It really depends on the artwork that you're creating. And because we are designing some fairly simple illustrations here, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, but let's get started and uh, bring it through to the uh, to the finish line. So I'm really going to go ahead here and wrap this up by just tweaking some of the line work on this last character that I've done up here because I think, you know, because I was being very careful in terms of the amount of detail and the thickness of the line weights and the uh, the articulation basically that I was placing into his beard I did go a little bit light on some of the key areas and really what I want to do is rather than defining too much of the details I want to define just the main uh, kind of contours of the beard the main line work uh, just to make it a little bit more obvious as to exactly what's happening there because the lines are so fine at this point it's it's a little bit tough to to see exactly what's going on so uh, i'm just going in there now and adding line weights to mainly the borders of the beard just so that that it stands out a little bit more and at this stage it's it is a matter of kind of balancing out everything all that rendering all that detail and, and just making sure that that it's all reading uh how it should be reading um, and that, again, is it, it's always going to take a little bit of a readjustment, I think. I barely have situations where I'm, I'm hitting the nail on the head 100% of the time every time. And so, you know, I always, I inevitably always have to go back and kind of make the adjustments where required. So there's definitely nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Uh, ultimately, it's just... You know, I think what, what determines really whether or not your artwork is going to uh, come out the the quality at which you want it to come out is the amount of determination you have to go back and fix those mistakes and to make sure that it is all coming together in the right way and, and not to ignore the mistakes. I think it's very tempting to not be bothered to fix something, especially if you're this far into it. It can be tempting to say, hey, you know what, this is done and, and not to really push it all the way through to be the best that it can be. But I always find for me that when I go back and and I do fix the things that need to be fixed, that it's always worth it. So here you can see me adding in some additional layers to the, the character's beard here to give it some more depth. And that's really what I'm looking for with this rendering at the moment is it's not necessarily a, uh, I guess, a situation where I'm adding in details. It's more what what do I need to add in to give it the right amount of depth at this point uh, without over detailing it so that it becomes a tone which is darker than what I'm desiring here. 
because otherwise, again, you know, I can quickly find that I've over-rendered, over-detailed the entire thing, and it's not looking at all the way that it needs to look anymore, uh, which, you know, can really suck, especially if you put great time into balancing out all that detail, and you've done everything on the same layer. It, it can be kind of a, an unfortunate uh, thing to realize when, when you've kind of gone all out on a piece and uh, and you realize that it's it's over detailed. So here I'm placing in some additional rendering at the bottom of the beard. You can see again, I'm, I'm outlining where those highlights are going to be and where those mid tones are going to start. And now it's just a matter of kind of placing in the line weights in the right areas to, to really define some of those layers. And you don't want to be too intense. You don't want to be too harsh with them. Again, it's, it's even the, like the more you come toward the end of an artwork, the more subtle the details become. And the smallest little strokes that you add in there can make sometimes the biggest differences. So, you know, you really just have to uh, use, your, use your eye at this point and make the best call. Make, make the best judgment based on what you think will look good and, and what you want at the end of the day. You know how you are, want your artwork to look and, and you know what looks good for you. So go with that. Go with your gut instinct. Maybe you do want something to be ultra, ultra detailed. Um, of course, it still needs to be balanced, but maybe that's just your, maybe that's just your look and, and you want it to be that way. So... Uh, you know, it's going to look, obviously, the end result is going to look different to someone who prefers a more clean style, which isn't as rendered out, which doesn't have much as much detail within it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you just got to, you got to go with your, your you got to trust yourself, essentially. Um, sometimes you're going to have situations where no one has done what you want to try before you. No one has articulated something in the way that you would like to articulate it yet, and you're going to be the first person to really, you're going to have to really go out on your own and, and try and do it for yourself, uh, which can be intimidating, but it's always the, I think that when you're being challenged the most, they're the times in which you're, you are going to grow the most in terms of your artistic development, when you're really challenging yourself and, and really, you know, putting yourself on the line and, and stepping outside of your comfort zone to come up with something that that maybe is is possibly going to be the most challenging thing that you've done thus far. So don't be uh, afraid to try new things. Don't be intimidated to do something that hasn't been done yet before because, again, those are the things that are going to help you to grow the most. And who knows? Someone may actually look toward you in order to figure out how to do something later on. Maybe you will influence somebody else. And uh, I don't think you know, any of us really have got much more than that to go off. Really, we've got our influences. But beyond that, drawing, there's not a whole lot that, that people can can really uh, necessarily tell you in terms of what you really need to do in any, any huge amount of detail, especially when it comes to these more subtle kind of nuances, such as the amount of detail you need to render into a beard. I mean, there's no one there to really tell you that. It's... It all comes down to you ultimately, and uh, I think that you got to be okay with that sometimes as an artist. It, it's it's hard to go out on your own, and it depends on the type of person that you are whether you'd have that that kind of initiative. Uh, I know for me, it's tough. It, it's really tough sometimes. So it takes me a little bit to to really go out there and and really try to figure this stuff out if no one else has done it before. But you know, a lot of this stuff I've learned from other people, and that, I think that's the best way to learn sometimes. If you do as others have done and, and they're getting the result that you want, then just do as, just keep doing as they do and, and you will reap what they, the, the rewards that they reap. It, it makes a lot of sense, uh, which is why I think, what, you know, one of, the re one of the things I tell my students right at the beginning of a, uh, of a semester is, or a new class that I'm just going into is I'll say, you know, who inspires you? Find, find references of who inspires you. Discover that first. Discover the direction that you want to go in and use that as your compass when it comes to developing your own style and when it comes to articulating the ideas that you have inside your mind in your own specific way. And I think that that just, it helps so much. It helps immensely. 
um, to be able to do that. So what I'm doing here, back to the beards, is I'm just, I'm, I'm adding in some subtle line weights to the bottom of this beard, again, to really articulate and define the, uh, the some of the key contours within that beard that are going to make it to stand out more clearly. And I think that it's, in, it's important for me to add those in here at this point. Uh, because I don't want to get the beard getting lost or, or necessarily fading in to the character's neck. I do want it to be distinct. Uh, you know, it's okay, of course, for it to fade into the, the character's face because that's what it's kind of supposed to do. But, you know, I, I think that there's that again, it's a it comes down to being a balance thing. Um, I think underneath the uh, the face here, where the beard ends, obviously, it, it's going to have some cast shadow there. It's going to cast down onto the underlying forms of the anatomy. So this beard, as you can see, it's come out quite detailed, even though it's just a white colored beard. Probably more detailed than I intended, but you know, the detail is there and it's, it's just me really getting more confident and comfortable with, with the work that I'm doing as I complete these beards. Yeah, I think that, you know, I'm going to call it a day on this beard and, and call it done just so that this, this video doesn't run too too much longer. And I, I do want to kind of fix up some of the other beards as well. So back down to our beard background, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in uh, some of the, the beard that I've done or some of the jawline around here. So we're going to cover that up. And I'm going to jump around here, make sure all of that is covered up. Very important. Because, you know, again, I don't want any of the line art from the actual head itself to be visually conflicting with the beard that I've created. We shouldn't have too much overlap there. And it's going to destroy that scruffy effect as well. We want to make sure that anything that's on top of our forms is articulated in its own right. Um, without without you know any visual distractions going on that may be coming from the underlying layers. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to again jump back to my linears here and continue the refining process. Again, just placing in some you know, it's a process and, and I think at the end of the day, this is probably kind of tedious to even watch and and observe as a recording let alone actually doing it and, and putting the time into it um but i think that this is really again what what can make your artwork stand out in a big way and the thing is is that it just takes it takes time you know you, you really do get out what you put in when it comes to uh detailing out your comic art the longer that you spend on it with you know keeping in mind the balance that you want to achieve the uh the greater the outcome is going to be and it just depends you know what kind of deadline you've got and, and how much time you are able to actually spend on it i think but you know there's there's obviously a point where you have to say all right it's done and, and you have to leave it and you have to move on to the next thing that's something that's that's always kind of hard for me to do and <laughs> Look, it's it's still a learning process for me. I think the fact that I never really have had any practice in sticking to uh, deadlines, in terms of comics at least, you know, I've done a lot of uh, game art and a lot of work in game studios and stuff, and yes, there's deadlines there, but for me, that that's nowhere near the, the amount of uh, intensity as creating a, a finished comic book page would, would ever, you know, amount to. So... I mean, uh, for me, it's it's a lot easier to do that stuff. Whereas when it comes to comic book art like this, that's that's harder to to stick to a deadline on because you know it's it's just so much detail. It's a lot more of a creative process. It's just so much more thinking that goes into it. You know, um, every aspect of it, whether you're you're the inker, the pencil, or colorer, or you're all of those things put together, you have to consider just. A, a, a complete set of, of attributes and, and elements that are going to play into every facet of that illustration from start to finish. And so 
um, you know, at the end of the day, that's why for me it, it's personally hard to, because I care about it too much, you know. I, I care about it a lot, so I do tend to take my time with it and that makes it difficult for me to, to really finish up things in a reasonable amount of time sometimes. Um, <laughs> that's often why it takes me a long time to get these YouTube videos out at times because I want it to be perfect and it took me a long time to to let go of that a little bit and to let go of the fact that it needed to always be perfect because sometimes perfect is not necessarily the best. Um, sometimes you you want to, I mean, there's there's really anything in life that's perfect and sometimes the the less perfect it is, the more genuine it can be and, and that's what I've... I've personally felt, uh, you know, in my artwork recently, you know, again, kind of letting go a little bit and, and trying to focus on on more, you know, achieving the same level of quality within my artwork that I have always been able to achieve, but but doing it in a more optimized way and getting to where I need to be in a shorter amount of time. So... This is pretty much where I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this dude. I think for the most part he's he's pretty much good to go. Now for this guy, he's he's still bugging me a little bit in terms of the way that his beard is is blending into his face there, and and I'm really not digging it at all. So I'm gonna go ahead here and and just try and uh, rearticulate it in a in a more desirable way for me uh, personally. Uh, and oftentimes, you know, we're, we're our own worst critic. And I know that's definitely been the case for me. It's probably better to be your own worst critic than to be uh, your biggest fan. Um, because if you're your biggest fan, then again, you can't really pick up on those mistakes. And there's nothing really there to, to push you. Uh, beyond the point that you're at to, to get better. But there is a point as well where you can be too self-critical to the point where, where you end up not really progressing at all because of it. And when it gets to that point, you do want to start to recognize maybe not necessarily what level of skill you're at, but at least how far you've come. And I, I think that's that's really the true measurement. You know, you, there's so many amazing artists out there that, and if you you compare your work to them, you're just going to become kind of discouraged. Um, you know, those who inspire you sometimes, uh, and it can seem like you're never going to get to that point. But you know, you have to remember that a lot of those people have had so many years of experience and so much time at the drawing board that you know the only thing that they've got over you is is time and and the amount of time and the amount of mistakes they've made and you you just got to be patient you know i don't think that's said enough you know we want to be better but we don't want to be patient enough to actually get to that point and to the point that we want to really be at and if you can't be uh patient enough then then you'll never get there you'll become unmotivated if you go into this knowing that it's going to take you a good good few years before you really get a handle on this. It's going to take some time because, you know, anything worth doing is going to take some time to, to actually achieve. Uh, then you'll, you won't be disappointed. It'll be, it'll be expected. You know, it'll, you'll, you'll know and you'll understand that you're not going to be perfect straight away and that you're going to need that time there to, to really uh, nurture your talent. And to really grow it, you know, um, it's very much this. It's it, that's very much. It's it's almost like raising your own your own child, right? You don't. Uh, you got to you to understand that, that this stuff is going to take time to to mature. And um, if if you can really hang in there for the long haul, and you can be committed enough, you will get there, guaranteed. You know, some people work and learn faster than others and that's fine you know you'll work at your own pace and, and whatever you're comfortable with but you will get there regardless regardless of how how long it takes you as long as you keep going uh, you'll be you'll ultimately reach the the end of the road so i think that that's that's something that that is important to consider because 
I mean, for me, I know that 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 was the case for me. You know, I, I always I always knew I never had any huge expectations of myself specifically because I knew that I wasn't going to be perfect and it was just going to be a time thing. If one person could do it, then what was the difference between that person and me? I mean, talent? Not really. I mean, that's merely, you know, again, the motivation to, to do to to pursue what you're passionate about. That's talent. But um Physically, what was the difference? I mean, the, the only difference was that they were determined to, to sit there and, and to get good until they, they got to the place that they wanted to be at. Okay, so here I'm, I'm starting to over-detail, and uh, it's probably because I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. But um, again, I want to make sure that this is going to read correctly. And uh, I feel like I'm losing the the tangibility of this beard a little bit <laughs> sounds weird to put it that way but that's that's what i'm feeling um so that is something that i'm going to try and fix here and you know i mean that's all right let's i'm gonna have to redo this part here because that's just not working out for me let's turn on this draft again and, and see if we can't address this issue um, you know sometimes you just rather than trying to sit there and, and fix something and, and try and get it to work sometimes you just got to go back in and, and redo the whole thing because <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it can't be saved, and and sometimes you just gotta you know disconnect from the the mistakes you've made and and kind of have another crack at it. Um, otherwise, you'll you'll be there forever trying to fix something that's just flawed. You know, we we do. I think that there's something to be said about knowing when to let go of something and and kind of biting the bullet and going back and and re kind of uh, doing what you need to do. I think I think the main problem with this is that the gr the grain of these beard furs was probably not going in the initially the the right direction that they needed to go in. So um, I'm gonna have to uh, kind of go ahead and and just rejig that a little bit. You know, make just making everything look right. And yeah, this isn't the most exciting thing to watch, but I think it's important to to show you because you know people people will look at my artwork and I'll go, you know, that's great, that's amazing, and and I love what you're doing here, but you know, I I don't think people always get to see the the tweaks and the the process behind it, and that is really uh, ultimately what you're missing most of the time when when you see those who inspire you uh they they're going to be they're going to be going through the same the same trials and tribulations as you are no doubt you know they're going to be erasing and they're going to be retrying their hand at things that they feel like they might have messed up and they're going to be just as insecure at times about their artwork uh you know to an extent and again i i think that's that's what keeps us in the comic art game is that it is challenging and it is always going to keep us on our toes. So one of the things I wanted to do with this particular beard again is just to darken it up in this end phase. And I think that for the most part, it's it's reading the way that, that I do want it to read. Um, just want to darken up underneath the mustache a little bit there and kind of in, uh, make a little bit of a suggestion of some some grain here so you can see there's a nice gradient happening here you've got the highlight here and then you've got the darkness here and again that just gives the entire kind of beard here that i've got going on some volume so i'm going to darken up this lip here put that into shadow and i'm also going to increase the shadow under the lip there just to get it standing out a bit more. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it, I think. Uh, you know, it's it's probably not perfect. These aren't perfect. You know, I'm kind of drawing them on the fly here. But hopefully, uh, you know, you've, you've, you've got the idea and, and you've got something out of this. This is 
The way that I'm rendering this, by the way, is very much the same way that I will render hair and that I will render many other things. Um, it's, it's always, for me, about describing the form and, and making sure that that form is being articulated correctly based on the overlaying materials as well that, uh, that it, that particular form is dressed up in or made up of. Because, you know, ultimately at, at, at the end of the day, that's, that's really, again, what, what I'm trying to achieve with almost everything, whether it be beards or the costume of the character or the, the lighting that the character may be, the lighting conditions that the character may have found themselves in because, you know, these, the shading that I'm using on these beards, all of that can totally change uh, based on the lighting setup. I mean, what if this guy with the white beard is in complete darkness? Well, obviously his beard is going to have a lot darker tone visually. Um, so it, the lighting environment is always going to affect your artwork and, and what kind of lighting setup you use. And that's really what I was talking about before when, when it comes to, you know, knowing your drawing, basic drawing principles and, and fundamentals is, you know, you've got to be able to be very familiar with those principles so that you can be a dynamic artist so that you're not just, you know, copying what you think is the right way to do something, but that you actually understand it and you know how to use it uh, in your own way when, when you do ultimately need to use it. You know, it's always, it's once you, it's kind of like once you know how to navigate around those principles and how to use them to your best advantage, that's kind of like a, a higher tier uh, superpower uh, when it comes to drawing because now you're, you're not only able to do cheap parlor tricks, now you're able to actually create whole new tricks and you're able to do magic that that uh, is, is really limitless, essentially. And you're able to pull off things that, you know, um, can only be pulled off by people who who really have a strong handle on, on what it is that they're doing and, and understand what it is that they're doing. So get those all important fundamentals down. You know, I, I see a lot of artists out there who, who really, you know, who are just starting out and they really want to know, you know, how to render this and how to render that and and they want to know what brushes I'm using here in Manga Studio. Again, it's just the default pen and pencil brush, the default pen, G-Pen, and there's nothing really that spectacular to it. It's really the, the, the artist behind the tools and how that artist is using them that matters. So I think that, yeah, you know, pe pe people, they want, to, they want to know, you know, what, what like how to render and how to do that and this and, you know, if they were to handle those principles to begin with, a lot of those smaller problems that that pop up later on uh, will kind of solve themselves without you ever really needing to ask. So it's kind of like instead of developing your skill on a micro level, you're essentially starting to develop your skill on a macro level uh, where you're, you're learning the overarching uh, topics that, that really do allow you to kind of take care of the smaller things naturally. And it's funny because, you know, a lot of those smaller things, they're kind of like the fun things. So we want to know how to do those first because we think that that's what makes an artwork look cool. And the reason that we think that it makes the artwork look cool is because all we really ever see in the end is that rendering. And and that shadow and that color and and you know we see that on the finished product and we think that that's what holds it all up but it's not it's it's those underlying fundamentals that you never really get to see once the artwork is built over the top of it so you know i mean that's that's my recommendation is is get familiar with those principles first and then you know deal with with all the other stuff that that comes there on after you know, as it as it pops up, and and you'll have what you need to have in order to to deal with it. It's uh, it's really that simple. So, I think that I'm just about ready to to wrap this up now because, you know, honestly, um, it's looking it's looking pretty solid to me, in terms of uh, what what I've done here. So. Yeah, um, that's, you know, I probably, you know, if I if I was to work on this some more, I'd, I'd articulate some of those tones to be a little bit more accurate 
and you know just to make sure that everything was reading uh, perfectly. But as I said, you know I could I could tweak this for a very long time and and perfect it to the max. But for this demo, I think that you've gotten to see a lot of the process that goes into you know how I personally approach the 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 structuring the drafting the development of and the rendering detailing of a uh, a a character that has facial hair uh, you know everything from the long shaggy beard to the to the kind of stubbly uh, stubble look and then of course the uh, the different shades of that beard that it, that a uh, facial hair can come in you know, I think that that what we've got here is is something that you can take and and try. And what I will do is I will actually include this this head template in the link below in in the description below this video, so that you can take it for yourself and and practice some beards as well if you don't already have some some heads that you can practice on. So uh, I hope that you've got a lot out of this video and that you found it useful. Um, I know that. You know, with something that is this kind of um, niche, I guess you could say, uh, there's not necessarily a lot of uh, content that's covered on it. And I, I remember actually one of the reasons that I decided to do this video was precisely because I, I did get a message some time ago from uh, an artist who who just was, was lost as to how to render out the beards for their characters. So, um, you know, hopefully this, this sheds a little bit of light on that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. I'd love to know what you think of the video. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel as well for more comic art tutorials, tips and tricks. And uh, if you're interested and you'd like to be kept in the loop on up and coming updates from howtodrawcomics.net, head on over to the site and be sure to subscribe. Alright, that's it for today. Until next time, I'll catch you later.